I'm Scott Al Miller, and on today's show, we're doing a house walkthrough. This is one of the largest houses I've ever seen in Nicaragua. It is absolutely enormous, very cool and interesting. It's Nicaraguan high-end. This is not an American-style house built in Nicaragua, but a very high-end one. We're not going to say exactly where it is. This is a private house that we were able to get a tour while construction was going on. No one is living in it at the time that we did the video, so we were able to do a bit. But it's also not a publicly for sale house, so we're keeping it a little bit under wraps. But we can say it is in Nicaragua Occidental. It's in the west of the country and is very, very cool, interesting to see exactly what Nicaraguan style mansions are going to look like and I really like some of the design of this house and grounds it's not maintained the best so don't be surprised like we're gonna have long grass we're gonna have you know fountains that aren't working but they're getting it's actively under uh, repair so that people can move back in and it's just been a while since they've since they've worked on that so this is this is an exciting one we've had this for a while so this is uh, at least I think a year and a half old footage but we were able to get in uh, and and wanted to give it some time because because we didn't want people uh, seeking out the house because it's not on the public market but very thankful that we were able to get the walkthrough. That's a big intro. I think you're gonna really enjoy this. So with no further ado, let's just hit the bump and get to the house walkthrough. All right, we're starting our tour looking out from the front fence. This is the security shack. It's actually big enough for security guards to live in. And this is the front entrance. This is. A classic notice there's a lot of construction debris because they're replacing roofs and all kinds of things uh, I don't believe this house had been lived in for a couple years at this point um, but they're getting ready to move back in so much glass on the front I love this like I guess California modern or Central American modern as I often call it it gives a vibe of like the 1960s and I don't know when this house was built but I believe it actually was the 1960s so there's Paul walking by so this is the security building it gives you a feeling of just how big the security building is it has a bathroom in it they could nap in there it's got its own windows it's very cool I love the lines on this house we're actually going to start over here on the side and you can see the, there's so many people working there that they've the the construction team has actually moved in so we're going to start from the side entrance rather than the main entrance cool courtyard here obviously nothing's maintained like i warned you but you can tell how beautiful this could be if this is full of decorations and well maintained a lot of these rooms i'm not actually sure what they're meant to be i believe this is the laundry facility uh and a lot of these rooms connect in really strange ways. So this is, notice that's open. That's not meant to be a bedroom or anything. But then there's a large courtyard here for cooling. So you have walls, but big indoor gardens. And then we in the back, there's a pool. So this is the narrowest part of the house, the easiest one to come through. Uh, these are outside bathrooms and an outside bar under a beautiful large but needs repaired roof. And you can tell the yard is just in terrible repair. The pool is empty, but it is a very good sized pool. You can see the people standing by it, just how big that pool is. And this gorgeous patio area, so much space to come out and do hosting of parties, do asada, do, uh, you know, major events. What a cool place it would be to have all your friends come and stay and be able to, to put them up and, and do things or, uh, you know, have, have events or whatever. Now this hallway is quite narrow but it is not as narrow as it looks the house is quite large and very very tall uh, these are um, notice the floor here we move into marble these are small bedrooms but small i mean they're they're reasonable sized bedrooms with a lot of light a lot of window you get a lot of air here and i like that a lot of these rooms open into courtyards but the courtyards are so big that it gives you a feeling like you're outside and in the open but you have that security of not being actually open to the outside yard in some cases so it would be really good for for children for example now this one goes into the pool area but notice that even the backyard that's a that's a good wall you can see behind it these are basically identical identical uh, bedrooms you lots of built-in cupboards and stuff as well and notice that even the beautiful woodwork above the doors this is a obviously a utility closet but so large you can step into it and then this kitchen space with view of the pool very cool not the largest kitchen but very decent and it goes directly into the formal dining room 
Now this is meant to have a serving station. You can see the platform there. Lots of windows looking out on the pool. So this would be a great place to have a big dining room table. Uh, and those cabinets there is meant for plates and silverware and all that kind of stuff. And then we pass through into the even larger formal, formal dining room. So the one's meant to be kind of a serving room and for, for smaller meals. And then this is the big dining room where you throw big parties. I'm just going to pass through again so you can see it. See the platforms where it's meant to have um, like, like prep um, space in there. It's meant to hold uh, some things. We got a bathroom in front of us, obviously. We're not going to go in there. We pop back through the courtyards, back out the way we came. So we're back into the front yard. And we're going to take a side entrance. There's so many entrances into this house. Into another courtyard. This one is set up for some activity. I honestly don't know what you would be expected to use it for. And it has that half wall. Like it's a very interesting space. Partially, I think it was designed for airflow into the house and not uh, to be a really prominent space on its own, but it clearly has a platform. It's meant to do something. This is the guard station again. I do not have access to it. <laughs> I tried. Sorry. All right, we're coming up to the main entrance. This beautiful turnaround for cars in the front, absolutely fantastic. And this front sitting area is perfect for entertaining. Like, there's so many entertaining spaces in this house. That's one of the best things uh, that you just have. You have options of looking in every direction, looking out to the street, looking into the house. Here we're going to follow Marcella into the house. Now, this is one of the indoor fountains. It's off right now, but really cool fountain space with a lot of airflow. Inside, there's so much dark wood but bright walls mixed with the dark wood, lots of glass, open atrium, it's very cool. This is the front salon. The amount of glass on this, you would definitely want a lot of air conditioning. Even though that's all slats, you could open it up, wind can just pour through there. You probably would want to add air conditioning in a house like this because it will get pretty warm. This main central atrium, not in the best repair, but it's not terrible, but is open to the sky, so it actually rains on that, very cool. Uh, this is one of the main bedrooms. So much windows, this beautiful ceiling work. I love that lowered platform. This gets very dark. This is the walk-in closet. All built-ins. And then this is the ensuite. Two sinks turn into the shower with a bench. We were really impressed with this. This is one of my favorite rooms. Bidet already installed. Not very popular in Nicaragua, more popular than in the US, more popular than in Canada, but bidets remain pretty uncommon in Nicaragua. This one has a private entrance to the side yard but it has its own wall. And there you can see the main entrance. So you can kind of tell where this is in the house. But it's a very nice private first floor balcony. This is all one story house. It does have some layers, but there's no second story. Right, we have a smaller bedroom here, but still quite large. And then a long, narrow bathroom. This is part of a Jack and Jill suite. This gets very dark. Um, there's no lights currently because of the repairs going on, so there's a lot we can't show. And then this is the other bedroom. So this is perfect uh, for kids where you want to have a shared bathroom. Some kids just really like that. This is about the largest, fanciest Jack and Jill I've ever come across. All the bedrooms come out one way or another into the atrium area, which is 
the piece de resistance for sure of this house. There's a lot of great things about this house, but that that main atrium, it it feels like you're in a public mall almost. Like it's so well done um, and and versatile, and it's really designed to give you a lot of light and airflow. Here you can see one of the the normal bathrooms in a smaller bedroom. Atrium out there again, and yet another bedroom. Everything has great views because there's there's just good outdoor spaces in every direction from the house. So no matter where you go, and a lot of this, these this wall we just went past, a lot of that is actually built in cupboards. Get a view of the atrium, it has so much, and then this is the built-in bar. So this has a full serviced bar. And then a just a cupboard, a bodega behind it, so the bar can store things that it doesn't need actively back there. You can tell there's construction debris in the atrium, but you can really tell how beautiful this would be when it gets once it's all done being fixed up. That is open air. Those are just like a pergola. Uh, it just helps keep wind from getting too crazy. More built-ins hidden along this wall and. We're back into that formal dining room, so that tells you where we are. This is the atrium room again. That was just to give you spatial uh, acknowledgement. This is the top patio. Again, wow, this is great for entertaining. You could put so many tables out here. You could definitely hold weddings here. That pool is bigger than it looks. That is a large pool. I guess it does look pretty big, but it's even bigger than it looks, I think. Let's go explore some of the yard space. Now, personally, I would say the thing to do with this is to turn it into kind of formal gardens, like putting walking paths and really beautiful gardens, maybe some fountains and stuff out in this yard would be amazing. Uh, what they've done with it in the past is much more of just kind of ground cover. That's like a tennis court right there. Might be a basketball court. I can't remember. And these paths have kind of cropped up and you can tell that at some point they had these nice uh, uh, pavers going through the yard that allowed you to walk between different things just gave you spots to stroll but it's all grown over now but look at that house I mean this is gorgeous I think it needs a few more large trees as well um, some more more shade would be good Most of the property has that brick wall around it, which is really nice, but the front is all that white metal. So there is a lot of visibility from the street, but you can tell there isn't a lot of activity or housing uh, directly outside of that currently. So it still remains kind of private, but the front of the house is definitely a bit exposed, uh, but it does provide for more airflow as well. So it's not all negative. Okay, we just jumped to this fountain once again. We still haven't made it through all of the house. Again, open to the sky with that pergola design to, to minimize side to side uh, wind. Then we come into, I don't actually know what this is designed to be, but it is a pretty cool space. It could be an office. It could be any number of things. It could be another uh, prep area, another little bathroom over here. And you all remember that outdoor space. This is where it comes in. Lots of windows onto that, which is fantastic. This is definitely meant to be like a wet bar, but you can have a wet bar in an office. And then this room is very well lit, but yet still dark with all of these glass encased uh, built-ins. And it has its own entrance as well. So easily it was meant to be an office of some sort. That's the main entrance right there. The design on this house for airflow is, is fantastic. So you'll notice that we haven't really seen, I'm not sure we saw any air conditioning in this unit, but there's so much airflow and such open space outside that it would be surprising how, how infrequently you would actually want to have air conditioning on in that house. 
All right, so that wasn't a very formal video. I understand. We had to kind of just run through. We didn't have a ton of time, and uh, we were getting a tour uh, by a number of different people talking about the neighborhood and stuff. So uh, I really appreciate that you watched that and uh, that I had to do a voiceover, and, and it's not the most formal footage, but I think it's a super cool house, uh, and I hope that you enjoyed that. So thanks for joining us. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, post on social media, tell your friends about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And if you wouldn't mind helping us game the algorithm just a little bit, these four videos on the screen, just click on any one of them that looks interesting to you, and that tells YouTube that the, our shows lead to watching more shows. That's the number one thing that they want to see. It's a great way to support us.